Today I'm talking about birth control that doesn't have any hormones, a topic that you've requested, so here we go. Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Dr. Jennifer Lincoln and I'm a board certified OBGYN and today we're talking about non-hormonal forms of birth control. So a lot of times when I talk about birth control, people say, oh, there's so many side effects. And most people are referencing the hormonal forms of birth control. So the pill, the patch, the ring, the shot, the kind of IUD that has hormones. And I get that, there are some side effects and you may be somebody who's had side effects with hormonal birth control and you wanna ditch the hormones or you just don't like the idea of hormones, or you have medical conditions where you can't use those hormones. So I'm gonna go through all of the methods today, pros, cons, statistics about how they work, and I'm gonna to touch on fertility awareness method or natural family planning, but I'm actually going to go into much more detail in my next YouTube. What I'll be reviewing today are the copper IUD, condoms, diaphragms and cervical caps, spermicide, the withdrawal method, and a little bit on natural family planning or fertility awareness method. But first I'm gonna start with some other forms of birth control that are non-hormonal, but they're permanent. So that's a vasectomy in somebody who has a penis and a tubal ligation in somebody who has a uterus or ovaries. And those are permanent forms of birth control. I'm not gonna go into those a ton today, but the bottom line is, is that you should not use them because you think you want to avoid hor hormones and oh, I'll just get them reversed later on. I made a whole separate YouTube about why vasectomy should not be considered temporary. And I can address that too when I make one about tubal ligation. So we're truly talking just about reversible ones. So the absolute best one out there is the copper IUD or in the United States the Paragard IUD. This is an IUD, it's a T-shaped device that goes in the uterus, it has absolutely no hormones in it, and it is over 99% effective at preventing pregnancy. That is an amazing statistic. It's also a long-acting contraceptive, which means that you don't have to do something every day. It's FDA approved in the United States for up to 10 years, but it can be used for up to 12 years. The pros are that it's an amazingly effective form of birth control. It's personal, nobody knows that you have it. You come into the clinic and have a one-time procedure done and you're good for like a whole decade. It can also be used for emergency contraception, meaning you can have it placed if you had an oopsie daisy moment and then left in place for your plan A. The downsides with the copper IUD is that it can make your periods heavy, crampy, uncomfortable. So not everybody likes that. There's also the fact that you need to come in to have an office visit to have the IUD placed, which can be uncomfortable or painful. And I've covered that in another YouTube, so you can click on over to that and see more about that there. Let's talk about condoms now. So there's two types of condoms. There's what we traditionally call the male condom, which goes on a penis, and the female condom, but I think a better term for that is the internal condom. So that goes in a vagina. Both of these are the only forms of birth control that will protect you against sexually transmitted infections. So they're great, and they can be great when used with other forms of birth control solely for that reason. Pregnancy prevention rate for the male condom is about 87% with typical use, and I quote typical rates because we're typical people. Everybody thinks they're perfect, but we're really not. And the internal condom is about 79% effectiveness. The nice thing about the internal condom is that it can be placed up to two hours before sex, so you don't have to sit there and kind of fiddle with it right at the moment. Condoms are pretty cheap, easy to find. Again, that sexually transmitted infection prevention is an awesome benefit. The downside is that you have to use it every single time perfectly for it to work, and accidents do happen. But if all you have for pregnancy prevention is a condom, it's better than nothing for sure. Next up, spermicide. So this is a gel that can be placed in the vagina, and what it does is it kills the sperm. It does this by changing the pH of the vagina and making the sperm unable to live. It has about a 79% pregnancy prevention effectiveness rate, so it's not great, but again, better than nothing. And they kind of vary, so you just need to read the instructions for how soon you can use it and how you might need to use more after a certain time period. Now there's a newer player on the block called Fexi that a lot of you have heard about and you've asked me about. I've covered it in a TikTok before, but really the take home message is it's like a spermicide. It's a little bit different, but it's very similar to a spermicide and it's pretty similar in how effective it is and it's prescription only, which really confuses me. And to me, I don't really get a lot of the hype. I love having more non-hormonal options, but to me, Fexi isn't some groundbreaking thing. There's also a high rate of side effects with Fexi and spermicide, like vaginal irritation, recurrent infections, not for everybody, but just to know that that's out there. Let's talk about some lesser used forms of non-hormonal contraception. So first up is the diaphragm. And so this is a little cap that's placed in the vagina. And what it does is it physically acts like a roadblock so sperm can't get up into the cervix and through the uterus and fertilize an egg. 
This is about 83% effective at preventing pregnancy, so better than nothing, but not one of our best methods. It does require a visit to the clinic because you do need to be fitted for a diaphragm. There are different sizes and we can test and see which one is right for you. It's also important after you've had a baby that you get fitted again to make sure that the diaphragm size hasn't changed. And also if your weight has gone up or down by 15 pounds, that also requires a new fitting. You have to use it with spermicide. You can place it a few hours before sex and you have to leave it in up to six hours after sex for it to work for any residual sperm there that haven't been killed yet by the spermicide. And one benefit is it can be left in for up to 24 hours after sex. So that can be nice if you're trying to be discreet. Something similar to a diaphragm is a cervical cap. And this is actually a little cap that goes right on the cervix. I don't see a lot of people using this, quite frankly. It's about 71 to 86% effective. And it's a bit of a learning curve because the diaphragm is placed in the vagina. This has to be placed right on the cervix. So that can be a little difficult. Downsides of it, other than having to figure out how to place it, is that it can be dislodged during sex if you're having really rough sex or if your partner has a large penis. It can be left in afterwards, just like the diaphragm. And you must use it with spermicide. Okay, I will mention the sponge, but I have never seen somebody use this, and I'm not even sure how available it is in the United States. But this is a sponge-like device that you place in the vagina. Keynote, this is an actual product. You don't just take a kitchen sponge and shove it up there. Please do not do that. About 73 to 86% effectiveness. And it's a physical barrier blocking the sperm and it also releases spermicide. You can put it in up to 24 hours before sex. So that's nice if you're going out and you don't know what's gonna happen. And you do have to leave it in for six hours after sex, just like with the diaphragm. Let's talk about the withdrawal method. I joke and I call this one parenthood. And, and here's why I'm not trying to say that it doesn't work if you're not perfect, but oh gosh, this puts a lot of trust in your partner because they have to pull out before they ejaculate every single time. This is a 20% failure rate. That's really high. That means in a year out of hundred people who are using this method, 20 will be pregnant. That's a lot. So this is a good method. If you're like, well, I don't want to get pregnant, but if I do, eh, I'm kind of okay. Like this is not the best method out there. And it really re relies on your partner pulling out every time. We do know that there's sperm in pre ejaculate or pre cum. That one makes me so nervous. Again, better than nothing. If you had sex and you didn't plan it to do the pull out method, but Oh, please don't use it long term. Okay, last but not least, fertility awareness method or natural family planning goes by a lot of different names and just a brief overview because I'm going to go into this more in a future YouTube. So the range on how successful this is, it's a big range. It's about 77% to 98% effective. So almost as good as an IUD. And you can imagine that people who are closer to that 98% effectiveness are are using this method perfectly. And so in order to use this method, you have to have a few things going for you. You have to have regular cycles. You have to be dedicated and you have to avoid sex on the days where you are in your fertile window or your highest likelihood of getting pregnant is. And there are some really great apps out there that can help with this. I've got references and resources in the show notes of some ones that I think are good to help with this. In fact, Natural Cycles is one such app and it's the only one that's FDA cleared to be used as a form of birth control for natural family planning. So you might wanna check that out. So using this involves a combination of tracking your cycle, tracking your basal body temperature, tracking your cervical mucus. You might track your cervical position, all of these together can help you understand when you are most likely to get pregnant and least likely to get pregnant. Again, more information coming in a future YouTube. So there we have it, non-hormonal birth control in a nutshell. If you've got questions or comments, please drop them here in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. And I'd love to know your experiences with using these different forms of birth control. How easy were they for you or were they difficult? References and resources in the show notes, please go ahead and subscribe and turn on the bell, especially if you wanna be notified when I release that fertility awareness method YouTube. And follow me for more on this conversation and a lot more stuff on TikTok and Instagram at Dr. Jennifer Lincoln. All right. Happy contracepting and stay safe out there, everybody.